here they come. So this is a pretty tiny little swarm. We'd call this a secondary or tertiary swarm. It might even be a process of supersedure where they've made a new queen because the old one wasn't really performing and the old one's left before she's killed and she takes a few bees with her. Anyway, we'll see, soon find out because I'm just going to catch the, the queen in this one, see what we're dealing with. If I can cut through the branch, that is. Hey girls. So this is our little tiny secondary tertiary swarm that's come out of a hive. One of our hives, possibly a queen supersedure process going on. Anyway, we're just going to give them a little shake onto the, onto the white sheet here. See if we can find that queen and get her in a cage. I'm going to start with, uh, oh well, I don't even have to look for her. There she is, right there. And she is an older queen. We'll just pop her in the cage like that. And there we go. Swarm caught. Too easy. I'm looking at this, this queen. She's quite big. She hasn't got much hair on her thorax. And my suspicion is this is a supersedure process. And she's left with you know a bunch of her loyal daughters before uh, she ultimately is killed off by the colony or, or a new emerging queen inside a hive somewhere. So anyway, we're gonna pop her in the box and just let the girls go in. Just whack her in there. Going to get a few bees on top of her just so they know where she is. Just like that. There is your queen. And let's get a few at the front door. That is the way in girls. So I have given them a spray of some sugar syrup. So it does really, it slows them down a little bit. It distracts them because they spend their time grooming each other, licking that sugar syrup off. It just slows them down a bit, prevents them flying around too much. But once they get going, they're really going to start moving to that box and up here. And this is where the action is. So there's our little swarm. It did literally take me about three minutes to cut them off, bring them here, dump them down, find the queen, put her in a cage, and in, in, there she is in the box. Now, why would I do this? And why do I think it's far from being a waste of time? The primary reason is that it doesn't really matter how you go about catching a swarm, whether you dump them straight in the box or you find and cage the queen, the job isn't done until you take the box away on dusk or move it because these bees will gradually move in during the course of the day and at the end of the day we catch the whole swarm and if we wait until dark they all go into the box and job is done. Sometimes the colony doesn't like the box that they've been put into. Sometimes that colony is probably right on the verge of making a decision to go and move into a cavity somewhere that they've chosen, they've gone through that process of finding a new home. And as a consequence, you go and dump them in the box and they go, hey, this wasn't our choice, we're out of here. They all take off, they go airborne. There's an absolute seeming chaos. They might go and land in a tree, you know, 20 meters up and you've got no chance of getting them anymore in that case. But if the queen's in the cage, they've got to come back they're not going to abandon her. So catching that queen, you've caught the swarm. And this is why you cage the queen. I don't know where they think they're going. Just stretching their wings. They're gonna have to come back here because the queen can't leave. Look at that. I can guarantee they're gonna come back. Come on girls, the queen didn't go. Come back. And here 
Here they come. They're all coming back. And that, my friends, is why you 